we're being confronted with an increasing unequal world. This inequality could be in the economy, on the political front, power imbalance, down to unequal rights and opportunities. It is important to note that all and most of these inequalities are interconnected and the brunt of the impact affect women and girls. I would like to welcome you all to the launch of the State of World Population 2017 entitled Walls Apart, Reproductive Health and Rights in an Age of Inequality. This year's State of World Population Report entitled Walls Apart, Reproductive Health and Rights in an Age of Inequality places particular emphasis on two critical dimensions of inequality. That is gender inequality and inequalities in realizing sexual and reproductive health and rights as they are essential issues that demand urgent action. This report highlights extreme inequality that has been shown to reduce economic growth globally. It does not allow a country to make use of people's capacities and the report will vividly argue that inequalities lead to concentration of economic and political power in specific demographies and can ultimately result in economic and political instability. The economic disparities that women and girls face has a direct correlation with poverty, access to reproductive health services and the non-attainment of their reproductive rights. For poor women, poor sexual and reproductive health can block opportunities, blunt their potential, and solidify their position at the bottom rung of the economic ladder. In contrast, women in the 20th percentile are able to exercise leadership, have access to education, and contribute meaningfully to the labor force of the Gambia. Ultimately, as government and development partners, if we do not address inequality, the likelihood of achieving the sustainable development goals that we have all signed on, which is ending poverty, the number one goal, becomes a distant reality. In order to attain the Sustainable Development Goal 2030, Agenda 2063, and the Africa we want, we must ensure that all forms of inequalities are breached, that women and girls enjoy as much as men and boys do in terms of access to education, employment opportunities, health services, political engagement and involvement among others. The woman in Basi need not die while giving birth because she is not in Banjul or Bijilu. The young girl in Fatoto need not drop out of school and commence a cyclical path to poverty because she wasn't born in Fajikunda or Fajal. To achieve this, we must all commit to ending inequality in all its form. We're happy that the proposed National Development Plan 2018 to 2021 seeks to address fundamental inequalities in the region. And for this, we congratulate the government of the Gambia. As the United Nations, we are committed to support the government of the Gambia to increase gender responsive programs for all, recognize and strengthen women and girls' capacity as actors of positive change, increase resources, and ensure the generation and use of age and sex disaggregated data pertaining to women and girls, as well as increase investment in employment generation and creation. Having gone through this year's report, 
I am cognizant and hopeful for the report calls for act actions that would lead to a brighter future for all. We are all women govern their own lives, have equal access to sexual and reproductive health care, and have the knowledge, skills, and power to access gainful employment. <laughs>